Hi, I'm Lisa LaRose, and I am a Vancouver comic creator, and I am here interviewing other fellow local comic creators for VanCap Online. Why don't you introduce yourself? Sure, I'd be glad to. Hi, my name is Ian Boothby. Uh, I do a comic book called Sparks for Scholastic, uh, one called Exorcisters for Image Comics, and I also work for Mad Magazine and The New Yorker. And you've been working in comics for how long? Since I was about 16, I was self-publishing a book called, uh, I say a book, uh, over at King Coast, just publishing like a Xerox uh, comic called I, and then another one called Squares. Uh, one was mostly comedy, one was mostly autobiographical, uh, but it was kind of in the big zine boom of the 90s. And um, you've worked on some pretty big projects. You worked on The Simpsons and the Futurama comics. Mm-hmm. Uh, how, how long did you work on those? Um, those for about 15 years and, and wow. it was, it was nice because there was a lot of people here in, in the Vancouver scene like James Lloyd and uh, John Delaney and uh, Nina Matsumoto who I do Sparks with uh, who also uh, were working uh, for Bongo but I was, I was the first one. I, I met them at uh, the Alternative uh, Press Expo in San Jose at, when I was still doing my Xerox comics and they were just starting off doing Bongo comics. It was a long process before I got to do anything with them. Uh, but once I did, it kind of it kind of took off. And then, yeah, a lot of other Canadians joined in, which is which is great. And like uh, all three of those people just did amazing work on the book. So um, you have two newer comics right now, kind of se ongoing series, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, Sparks, which I've read, and it's amazing. Um, oh, thank you. Well, I'm into middle grade comics, so I'm like, this is the perfect comic for me. Um, and then you've got Exorcisters. That's right. Which it seems like a bit more mature. A little bit more, yeah. But yeah. I think generally all ages. There's a couple of there's a couple of swears uh, in it, but I think it's uh, I think it's fine. I do that one with uh, Giselle uh, Legacy, uh, who's best known for a, a comic that uh, no one seems to know how to say because it's Menage, and then it's like the number three. So because okay. they don't know whether to say trois or whether to say three or and and I've never really asked her, uh, but it's uh, it's quite a popular web series. Um, but yeah, she's been doing just a, a great job on it. It's about uh, uh, two uh, women who you think are sisters. Turns out they're they're not sisters. One is actually the soul of the other one. Uh, her soul was sold by her mother when she was a teenager, and she got it back. But by that point, the soul was just too different to be reunited so they pretend to be sisters and help out people who uh, are in similar situations. And you want to give a big uh, description of Sparks for those who sure. haven't read it yet? Yeah, sure thing. Uh, it's about, uh, in general, there's a lot more to it than this, but in general, it's about two cats that want to be heroes, but no one takes cats seriously as heroes, so they dress up as a dog, and they become the greatest uh, dog hero of all time. Uh, they got a robotic dog suit, and they fight an evil alien baby, and uh, and end up saving uh, the world with the help of a, a, a squirrel, a hyperactive squirrel. And then we've got a new one coming out called Sparks Double Dog Dare in, this August, uh, where there's another Sparks that turns up, and we don't know what the deal is with that. And at the same time, uh, we find out that Charlie is, de like in the last book, we dealt with kind of August having agoraphobia and uh, some trauma and in this one we deal with a bit of Charlie's trauma the other the other cat the more outgoing cat and find out why he strongly dislikes birthdays I'm looking forward to checking that out and that comes out this summer sometime yeah August? it comes out early early August and okay, cool. uh, uh, Nina Nina Matsumoto has just done an amazing job on the yeah. art and Dave Dedrick uh, is just great stuff on the colors very very proud of it and we're right now working on the third book cool. so hopefully that'll come out everything got delayed because of plague, uh, but but uh, the second book is not delayed. That will still be coming out August, uh, as it was. And you have been working in as a writer for a long time, not just in comics. What other kinds of work do you do, and how does that influence your work in comics? Well, when I was 13 years old, I started to send scripts to a TV show called Switchback that was uh, filming here at the CBC, and uh, they ended up buying them and uh, and and I uh, ended up being in them and so I was a semi-regular on this uh, kids TV show for about six uh, six years for my teen for my teen years and I was one of the youngest writers in Canada uh, the wow. youngest union writer 
in, in Canada. They didn't have a writer's guild then. They had uh, another, it was called Actra back then, but I was like the youngest uh, one. But it was mostly just to give myself acting roles because no one was writing for a chubby little 13 year old boy. And so I wrote those parts and then I did those parts for the most part. Uh, and then I always loved comics and uh, there's no way to get into comics except to do your own comics. So I drew my own comics, uh, which you know some people say I'm not a very good artist, but I was apparently okay enough uh, and they got semi popular. And yeah, so what are those I've been working. Comics called? Can I ask? Uh, they they were called I and Squares, and I also uh, did a comic strip called I for a local newspaper in Vancouver called Terminal City as well. That was sometimes reprints of the comics and sometimes new material, but it was always, you know, making my own work was just kind of the way to do things in Canada. Uh, you can't really wait for someone to offer you something; you've got to actually do it. And I've, I'm a playwright as well, and I always say like, if you want to do a play in Canada, the first thing you got to do is build the stage because it's not there. So yeah, that's basically what I've done as far as uh, my writing career. And I've also seen you um, perform for D&D Improv. Yeah, I do a show called uh, The Critical Hit Show that was created by Eric Fell, uh, who's an improviser uh, friend of mine. And uh, I'd never done any kind of role playing before that was completely new to me and we've got people in the show that have never done any improv before but have done role playing and so yeah we ended up creating this comedy improv show that's been running about eight years uh to you know uh full houses at uh, at the real theater here in vancouver uh the last two months again because of ah uh we've been doing it online and uh, fooling around with that a bit new new formats but yeah it's always it's always fun to try something new that's uh feels out of my comfort zone. I was never a Star Trek fan, but I did a show called Star Trek for Vancouver Theatre Sports League uh, a couple of years ago, a couple of years ago, many years ago, and it turned out to be like a big hit show as well. But again, I've never been a Star Trek fan. So if there's something like that that's going on that is something I don't really understand or uh, don't quite get, I always find those things kind of fun to do because you end up learning as you go. What sort of themes or motifs or kinds of stories are you most interested in when writing? Uh, usually a dealing, almost every one of them is dealing with trauma in some way uh, and, um, and not letting it take over your life, but using it uh, hopefully uh, to help others, helping others to, which in, in turn ends up helping yourself. That is a similar theme, I think in both Sparks and uh, Exorcisters. So, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, I always, I know it's like a kid's book, Sparks, uh, but occasionally people will come up to me and they'll uh, talk about how, wow, that's dark. And like, oh, yeah, there's, there's some dark in there. But I always think the best kid's books have a, have a big chunk of dark in them as well. And if you were to give advice to new creators or someone hoping to break into com uh, comics, what would that be? It would be to do your own thing, um, whatever whatever that is. And back back when I was starting, it was basically going to Kinko's and Xeroxing uh, your own stories and try to and mailing them off or getting them into comic stores or bookstores. Uh, but nowadays, you've got the internet, so you can put up stuff as your own web comics. If you're interested in doing that, if you're interested in doing radio dramas, you can do podcasts. I do a podcast. Uh, and we're probably going to end up doing some drama stuff soon, too. Again, it's out of my comfort zone, but it sounds like a fun thing to do. If you want to do films, there's nothing stopping you with your phone from shooting uh, anything right now. You've got editing software that's better than anything that was around 20 years ago. So, yeah, just uh, do it yourself and, and try to be true to the characters. Try to have them uh, be who they are. And and if you, if you can, have it... Uh, have it be about something that you care about, not necessarily something that you think would be popular. And where can people find you online, see your work to support you, read your comics? Sure. Well, if you want to, if you want to read Sparks, it's in every bookstore for the most part because it's through Scholastic. So, so that's, that's nice. The same thing with the Exorcisters trade. Uh, the first uh, trade paperback called uh, Damned If You Don't is also in bookstores. You can go to the Image website, image.com. Uh, me personally, I'm on Instagram. 
uh, at uh, Ian Boothby or also on Twitter at uh, at Ian Boothby. But just just Google me and you'll uh, you'll 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 find it. Um, uh, the New Yorker uh, cartoons uh, they they usually uh, publish those on their uh, Twitter and their all their social media. So go check those out. And I do those with my wife uh, Pia Guerra, who most people know from the uh, comic book Why the Last Man, but she's become this incredible editorial cartoonist since Trump's gotten into power and it's her way of venting her rage. And um, she's just been doing such an amazing job with that. Uh, so yeah, we, we kind of got together to do New Yorker stuff and to do Mad Magazine stuff. So, and you can go to madmagazine.com and our stuff is on there as well. Cool, and I'll be grabbing all those links and posting them in the video description so you oh, can thank you, go and find those things. I highly recommend sparks i'm excited to try and read um extra sisters maybe get an amazon copy for myself i love physical comics so i'm a little sad about no van calf this year but yeah it was same here lovely to interview you online for van calf online and hopefully we'll see each other in person next year that would be fantastic van calf in person next year yes for sure okay thank you so much yeah thanks this has been fun thank you for everyone who's watching this video Oh, and please don't rob any of my stuff if you see it here. Don't steal yeah. my things. It's not worth it. Everything, ba everything back here is all fake. It's all like Ikea uh, nonsense. It's not real. So don't, don't. Get, it's get, all a fake backdrop. Yeah, don't it's not, come to It's my not house. even items. Nope, I'm not even real. This is not real. Nope. All right, thanks for coming to This Is Not Real online. <laughs> okay. Have a good Take one. Care.